in this series of videos I'm attempting to repair and restore this HP 9845B vintage computer. In an earlier video in this series I found a couple of the ROMs were failing in the PPU ROM card and one of the issues with the ROMs in this machine is they are a bit unusual in that they uh, the 64k ROMs but they have latches on the address line inputs so you can't just uh, easily find a replacement and also the pinout is not the standard pinout for uh, ROMs as we uh, would find them today. Now you can still get EEPROMs with latches on the address lines and I do have some. Uh, these are 64k ROMs as well but they're 28 pin rather than the 24 pin of the HP ROMs and the problem with these is to use them you'd have to make up an adapter. The pinout um, is fairly, it's fairly close to the HP but there are differences of course. Uh, so you'd need to make an adapter and the problem with the HP machines are the uh, cards are very close together so you probably could squeeze in an adapter but I wanted something a bit more uh, long term as a fix. I see these ROMs quite a lot and they're always an issue trying to find a workaround because they do quite uh, often fail. So what I did in this instance was I put together a breadboard version of the ROM. So if I just pop this one off the machine. So as you can see this contains an EEPROM. In this case this is the uh, 0836C um, EEPROM that we've got here and on the breadboard we've got the EEPROM itself and a couple of transparent latches and that's all we need really to replace one of these but of course we can't plug this in without using something like this. So what I did is I compressed all this and turned it into a small board. Before I did that I made another version of it, same layout of the breadboard. The only difference here is that instead of a standard EEPROM I used uh, a higher capacity uh, one-time programmable EEPROM and this is actually a 512k EEPROM as opposed to the 64k for the HP ROMs. Now that means I can put all eight images for the PPU onto a single ROM. We can't have it uh, replace all eight at once because uh, obviously the, uh, the ROMs on this board are decoded so they're selected by uh, different control lines um, but we could make up a system where we could select uh, the drop-in replacement to be one of the eight images and that's what I've done I've compressed all this into a small board design they finally arrived and so what I'm going to do now is get one of these made up I've already prepared the image I'm going to use for the EEPROM and it will contain all eight images and the jumpers we can see on here these are kind of solder bridge jumpers these will allow us to select the particular image that we want to use for the particular instance of the device so I'll get one of these assembled and uh, we'll see if it works so I have assembled one this is as you can see the PPU version so I've done a, an image for the PPU I've done a second image for the LPU so we can have uh, one of these that will suit the LPU uh, ROM set. Um, I've got the um, jumpers configured for this particular ROM so this in theory should replace this ROM and uh, in theory we should be able to use this as a drop-in replacement. It's the same pinout as the standard ROM, same size, same thickness and it should fit directly into the a PPU board. Uh, in this instance I've used some um, pins off an old uh, ROM, an old failed ROM, just to make it uh, look a bit more the part, uh, but the boards are designed with holes so you could just put standard connectors in these if you wanted to. Um, all I did was use the linishing machine, uh, basically grind this back till it was halfway through the uh, two rows of holes along each edge and then soldered the pins on and so they're nicely secured but it looks uh, quite neat and this in theory should fit directly into the board. Before we plug it in we'll go over to the uh, PC, put these in, we'll verify them and make sure they do actually work. So we're over at the PC and I'm going to use my Dataman 48 Pro 2 and this can 
read this type of ROM directly. We can't program it, of course, it's a mask ROM, but we can read them. And so what I'm going to do is open up the programmer. We'll select the correct image. So we've now got the correct image loaded. And what I'll do first is test the breadboard version to make sure that will give us the correct results. So I'll plug this into the programmer. We'll try and verify that. And as you can see, that verifies fine. And now for the important bit, we'll try plugging our replacement module in. And we'll try and verify that. And as you can see, that also verifies fine. So good news is our modules seem to work. What I'll do now is get these plugged into the PPU ROM card and we'll see if the machine will still work. I have the two modules plugged into our ROM card. As you can see, they look quite nice and neat. They don't stick up uh, any further really than the original ROMs so it uh, should fit into the machine quite comfortably and of course I have the correct images selected for the two ROMs. So I'll get this plugged into the machine, I'll get the logic analyzer started up and we'll make sure that we can actually access these ROMs and that we get through to the same part of the code. I've got the ROM card plugged back in, it's still on the riser so we can keep an eye on it and I've got the logic analyzer connected in the same way I had it connected before. So we'll start by trying to power this up. This is the first time I've tried this. If it's working at all, we should get a single beep, but I won't really know if it's working as well as it was with the two breadboard modules until we look at the logic analyzer, but we'll try and power this up. Good sign so far. And I'm also going to try pressing uh, control stop and see if the it's actually the disable um, LED for the printer comes on. And um, it was coming on before in the way it should. You probably can't see it, but it is now coming on and going out. So it does look like we're getting uh, into the startup code, but we'll move the camera, look at the logic analyzer and make sure that our two new modules are doing what they're supposed to. I've loaded the setup for the logic analyzer. This is the same setup we had previously it's set to trigger when the init line goes high and it's set on a uh, data address bus value of 7A1E which if you recall is the start address for our monitor ROM. So we'll try arming the analyzer and I will now power up the HP and we'll see if our new ROM modules actually work. And so that's a good sign we've actually branched to the correct address from the correct address so we'll now try going through and see if we are actually going through the correct code 7A1F, 7A20, 7A1E let's check the values there I'm just checking with the source code so yes we are getting the correct values okay I'll move the camera back so that's a good step forward let's turn this off um, it means we can now put the PPU ROM card back into the uh, card rack and I can then start to access the other cards. I couldn't plug this in all the way of course with the breadboards attached but now with these modules I can plug it all the way in. We can put the other cards on risers and I can start investigating the other faults in a bit more detail. It also means of course that we can plug the monitor in which we couldn't do with the card on the riser. I found a few faults with the monitor, I'll go into that in the next video, um, but that's what we'll do in the next video in this series, is we'll plug this card all the way in, we'll attach the monitor and see if we can get that working.